Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the responding to assumptions about me tag. I know it's a little bit old. I actually did this on Instagram a couple months ago and it was pretty funny so I wanted to do a, a YouTube ver version as well. Uh, so I asked uh, a little while ago in the community section of this YouTube channel uh, some more assumptions that you have about me and it's been a little while but I'm finally getting around to responding to them and I've quickly glanced through them but haven't really like properly read them or thought about them because I wanted this to be more of like an initial response um, so I think let's just dive in if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and let's get in with the assumptions <laughs> So I've just got my laptop here that I'm going to be reading them off. The first one says, You were that girl in school who would get really annoyed at the kid with the plastic water bottles. <laughs> I think this is pretty funny. I think maybe this is what you assume I would be like, like if I were in school now, maybe? Um, really like strange assumption. I think it's pretty funny because uh, no, not really annoyed because when I was in school I didn't really have the awareness of plastic pollution like I do now. Um, so it wouldn't have bothered me all that much, like littering has always bothered me, so if I saw someone like chuck a water bottle just on the ground and not in the bin, then that would annoy me. And I always just thought it was like a weird concept that people bought water in bottles anyway. I don't ever remember a time where I've done that, um, just because like water's free and it's pretty weird to like pay for it, to have it in a plastic bottle. Um, but yeah, I was not like annoyed at people in school. <laughs> The second comment says, you are a very loving person, you are also a highly sensitive person, and I think that's pretty accurate. I am an HSP, which is a highly sensitive person, um, that goes for both like physically and mentally and emotionally. Um, if you don't know what an HSP is, um, look it up, <laughs> I guess, but it basically means that you're... Um, yeah, you're like highly sensitive and therefore like quite intuitive and that definitely resonates with me. So yes, I am highly sensitive. I think it's pretty interesting um, reading these assumptions from people who have never met me, but obviously you've seen me and you've interacted with me on some kind of level because you see me in videos. So it's interesting to see how much of my like authentic personality comes through on camera. I always try to be, um, I try to present myself as very authentic online um, you never know how much of that comes through and what uh, barriers that I'm not even aware of are there. So it's interesting when you guys uh, get it like really spot on, but also like really what I would feel like really inaccurate. But anyway, um, yes, I think that I am a very, well, I, I am a very highly sensitive person and I believe I'm very loving as well. I do have a lot of love to give. The next one is you used to eat somewhat unhealthy and wasn't aware of your environmental footprint and had some sort of wake up call. Uh, no, I've never really eaten unhealthily. Um, I was raised with um, just like a natural understanding of nutrition just from, um, I don't know, my mum just being uh, an open communicator with me at all times and teaching me about what I'm putting in my body and not in like um, like a teachery way but just kind of you know if we were in the kitchen we would just talk about food I guess um, and I just naturally grew up uh, we all grew up doing like me and my brother and my mum grew up doing things together so we would like cook together we would clean together we would do all that together and we would just have conversation around it so I pretty much always been aware of food and nutrition in just like a very natural ordinary way ordinary to me anyway um i've never really been exposed to unhealthy food never really ate in like fast food places or had like microwave meals or anything like that it depends what you constitute as unhealthy as well but um for me i know a lot of people think that i eat quite healthily when i just i feel like i just eat normal so i think it's definitely subjective but yeah, I don't know. I've definitely not eaten unhealthily. What was the rest of that? Um, and you wasn't aware of your environmental footprint. And again, environmental footprint has been something that I've been somewhat aware of my entire life. But 
um, in the past few years definitely increased my personal self-education on that. Um, like I said, I didn't used to be aware of like plastic pollution so much um, or even things like the animal agriculture on our um, environment. So it's just progressed. As I, as I suppose everything does, you grow older and you, you, your education and your experience grows and you learn new things and you implement that into your life. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's, I, I used to be like an unhealthy person who was just like, didn't care about the environment or didn't know anything and then there was like a snap and I woke up and like now there's been like an aha moment. It's not been like that, it's just been like a natural progression and part of my life always, I think. You've never thought about quitting your zero waste journey or lifestyle. That's true because it's not, I don't feel like it's something you can quit. It's not like a job, it's just you do better when you know better and now I know better and so I do better. You are Hindu or Buddhist? Uh, no, I don't follow any religion. I think that there are um, some good lessons and some good practices in some religions, but I don't think that that is necessarily where the only place that you can get those lessons or achieve the same results with different practices and I don't personally subscribe to any religion. You don't go outside much. <laughs> I don't know why this one just tickled me. Um, I definitely don't go outside as much as I'd like to because um, I work from home and largely from my laptop. So I'm usually at home on the screen, which isn't, um, I would like to go outside more, but I do make it a conscious effort to get outside and get into some form of nature as much as possible. So for my lunch breaks, I'll go to the beach or I'll go for a swim or um, when I was in London, I used to go to the parks like every lunch break and I would go for walks. I get, I get to like nature areas as much as possible. So maybe that's why you don't see me going outside much. I suppose when I film videos as well, I'm indoors. So it would make sense that you think I never leave my little box in here. <laughs> I'd assume that you may struggle with anxiety or even depression. It's interesting. I would love to know some of these assumptions, like what has come up that made you assume these things. Uh, but yes, I have struggled with uh, multiple depressive episodes in my lifetime and also anxiety. Um, if you'd like me to talk more about my personal experience with either or both of those things, let me know in the comments and I can definitely talk more about it. I'm not sure if this is the video for it because I could go really in depth or really not. I don't know how much to say. But yes, I have struggled with depression and anxiety in my life and I have um, not for a long while, not for a, a number of years, because um, I feel like I've got a hold of what my triggers are and set healthy boundaries and um, know the warning signs and also know how to combat it before it gets to the stage where something like medication might be needed. But if you'd like me to go more into detail about my story on that side of my life, then I can definitely talk more about it. Just let me know in the comments. You're not a very physically sexual person. You prefer to get to know someone's personality and resonate with their soul rather than their looks. Um, not sure I understand this one. So you're not a very physically sexual person. I disagree with. I'm very like kinesthetic. So I like um, touch and I do have a sex drive and I do enjoy sex. Um, and cuddles and kisses and all intimate goodness that goes with it. So I, I would say that I'm I am a very physically sexual person, for sure. Um, you prefer to get to know someone's personality. Maybe they mean, like, I, I don't go just off looks when looking for a partner, which is true. But I also think that is somewhat true of a lot of people. Like, if you're looking for... A relationship of some kind then someone's physical appearance um, in terms of like attractiveness shifts depending on who they are so when somebody um, say is like a really lovely person I feel like that shines through their face and through their being and through their eyes and they look like a very attractive person whereas somebody who's maybe not so nice of a person that also shines through their face and they they're not attractive I suppose I see that kind of aura in motion rather than just like a photograph of somebody and like dissecting and seeing whether they're like symmetrical and like technically attractive. I don't know. Um, yeah, I definitely go for personality and think that that's a huge 
part of attraction for me. I hope that answers, I suppose it's not a question really. I hope that's what you meant by it. You are stress free. That is an interesting one. I wonder why I assume that. I suppose there are stresses that crop up in my life as they do everybody's life and I deal with them as best as I can and try to not mull over them and make it affect every ounce of my life. So maybe that's why I'm pretty, I practice, I try to practice to separate things and not, you know, have one niggle take over every other aspect of my life. So maybe that's why you see that I'm stress free because um, I don't let it overwhelm me, that's for sure. I have um, tactics for dealing with stress and anxiety and things like that and um, but I certainly have stresses. I mean they do they do happen. I do get stressed and I have stresses in my life so that's an interesting one. I wonder who, I don't think anyone has a stress free life. Like they're never stressed about anything ever. Maybe. Maybe some very enlightened people. It took you forever to decide to go vegan or zero waste. You couldn't make up your mind. No, not at all. Like I said before, it's kind of when you know better, you do better. Um, and although my vegan journey, <laughs> if you want to call it that, um, was like overnight, I, the education wasn't, so that was an interesting one. But um, maybe I'll make a video on how I went vegan. Maybe that would be an interesting one. Also, let me know in the comments if that's something that you would like to see. Um, because I haven't heard anybody talk about how they went vegan that like resonated with me at all. It always seems to be um, either they like watch a documentary and it made them vegan or it was a slow transi transition or there was some kind of like wake up call, um, which none of those are the case for me. But um, no, I went vegan overnight and never looked back. And same thing with zero waste-ish, although it's both is a learning curve and you will make mistakes and so it's not like one day you're non-vegan, non-zero waste and the next day you're perfect because that's not, that's just not how it happens, it's not how it works. We live in a non-vegan um, linear economy world and that's just what we have to deal with and sometimes we get trapped in that. Um, but as soon as I became aware of the environmental damage of a certain product, um, I stopped using it. Um, as soon as I knew how much cruelty was involved in dairy, I stopped buying it, stopped consuming it. Uh, it's not, for me, it's, I know where my boundaries are, I know what my ethics are, I know how I feel about things, and I know when something um, is right or wrong in my eyes, and I will have nothing to do with it if it doesn't align with me. So, maybe that's just me, but if, if something is horrific, I don't want to play a part in it. <laughs> that That's how I see it. So no, it didn't take me long at all and I wasn't mulling it over and I didn't have to decide. It was pretty simple. It just makes it so much easier that way as well. It's not, it's not this um, internal suffering and pulling back and forth and pulling your hair out and wondering, oh, what should I do? Oh, now I feel guilty that I did it and oh, but it'll be too difficult. It's just, you don't have to worry about it. It's just, yeah, vegan now, yeah, I'm gonna reduce my waist now, like, done like it's really easy I don't have to think about it anymore like for me that's the easier thing than trying to convince myself that it's okay you were brought up on holistic eating and continued what you were taught as a child um, yeah that's basically what I was describing earlier about my upbringing and uh, I definitely had like a holistic upbringing um, there was not um, that kind of hierarchy of parent and child so much it was this is a family and this is how we eat and this is how we communicate and there is no difference depending on your age there was no discrepancy there was doesn't there's no discrepancy on your sex or your gender it's just you're a human being you deserve respect and this is how we treat people and that um i suppose is quite a holistic upbringing um and continue what you were taught as a child definitely it was my stepping stone i've da i've now um gone on my own trajectory in life as you do when you leave the parental home and you go off onto your own life. Um, so there are definitely some differences in how I live and my beliefs to my family than anybody else I know really. But um, 
but yeah it's definitely how I was brought up definitely played a massive role in who I am and what I know and my life now for sure you appreciate true and solid friendships over a large social circle that is definitely true I would much rather have one or two very close friends than know 10 or 20 people who are just acquaintances um, I really respect and um, value uh, true friendships not that the other friendships wouldn't be true but um, authentic and real and deep and honest friendships you know somebody who I can really rely on and um, can talk openly and unperturbed to and just speak my mind and not not have to worry about how they'll receive it because they know me and they love me and you know like a good solid friend who you could go to for anything you like processing your emotions on your own I feel like this is somewhat true um, it depends what emotion it is um, I do like to when I feel emotional I do like to go off into my own corner, into my own safe space and kind of process it, yeah. I guess I would agree with it. Um, I like to journal, I like to meditate, I like to have a bath and kind of feel all the feelings. Um, and then later on, I like to speak with somebody about it, whether it's uh, my own personal emotions or whether it's to do with somebody else, maybe an argument or a disagreement. Um, or anything else, I like to speak with that person and be really just open and authentic and just speak what's on my mind and how I'm feeling and have that reciprocated as well, have it a conversation. So, but I suppose initially, yeah, when I'm feeling emotional, any kind of emotion, whether it's happy, sad, angry, any of that, I do like to kind of process it myself. Yeah, I suppose I would agree. True practice of mindfulness is very important to you. Wondering whether that came gradually or as a more sudden awakening. Um, I would say partially mindfulness, I can see, it's not, I mean, it's definitely, mindfulness isn't a personality trait, but I think that certain types of personalities are maybe more prone to mindfulness. Um, so as a highly sensitive person and as an introvert, I think perhaps I'm more prone to mindfulness because I have, um, I appreciate my own uh, time and space where I can meditate and process emotions and feelings and thoughts and creative ideas um, and as a highly sensitive person and as somebody who picks up on others energies and as somebody who likes to have things um, in a certain way so for example I like to have a minimalist home it would make me feel very um, anxious and overwhelmed to be in a space that's like very cluttered for too long um, so I suppose mindfulness becomes more easily to someone like me who's a bit more easily affected by the outside world and just like things a very certain way. So I've had, I've had to be mindful in my life. Um, so I suppose it comes more naturally, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> but yes, practicing mindfulness is very important for me. It's kind of the point of everything that I do, it, it underlines everything I do. If you notice the banner of my YouTube channel says intentional living, um, and that can be um, changed out to mindful living to me, they kind of mean a very similar thing. Um, because you have to be mindful in order to be um, outside of the norm. So to refuse certain social norms like plastic packaging or um, animals, to eat dead animals, um, you have to be mindful that those are going to be constant, constantly around you and you have to be mindful to um, know how to avoid them and where to go to get something else. So I suppose the way that I live definitely enhances that is what I'm getting at. But yes, mindfulness is very important to me. You're an introvert? Yeah. You never thought you'd give up your blonde hair colour. Um, no, I've never thought that. I went through phases of having every hair cut and every hair colour, um, and I was never attached to any of them. I was all, I just kind of did it on a whim, and when I felt like a change, I changed. Um, yeah, I suppose I've always cut and coloured my hair since I was a child. My mom 
was a hairdresser for a while when I was a kid and she would like practice on my hair and do um, like bleach it and do highlights and cuts and things. So I've kind of always just had it around so it was very easy for me to just like kind of chop and change and do something different. Um, and I suppose when I started this YouTube channel I must have had blonde hair and I think I, I had it for a while. That was kind of the one that I landed on for the longest period of time. Mainly because of the texture. I wanted to kind of kill my hair. I know it's not it's not alive but I wanted to um, like strip it of any nutrients and dry it out because I wanted more volume in my hair, more like coarse texture. I know it's not what everybody goes for but that's what I wanted so it wasn't so much the colour as the texture that I wanted from the blonde hair. Um, but I was never like stuck on like I've never thought uh, of my hair as like a huge part of my identity. I've never been scared of cutting it off or changing it up. So no, I never thought that I would stick with it. I assume that you're very compassionate and you wear your emotions on your sleeve. That's true. I am definitely very compassionate. I'm an empathetic person and sometimes it's a bit overwhelming being so empathetic, to be honest. Um, I definitely need to work more on, um, having more of like a barrier so I don't pick up other people's emotions as easily. I was going to train to be a therapist at one point and a lot of people have told me that that would be a very good job for me because uh, I've, I've always been the person who people kind of confide in or even like new people who I've just met will kind of tell me things that they then later go, oh my god I can't believe I told you. I think they just pick up that I'm, I don't know, kind of like an open non-judgmental person. So they feel comfortable doing that, which is great. But my biggest fear of becoming um, like, like a therapist, for example, would be that I would kind of be overloaded with other people's emotions too much and kind of hold that in as my own. So that is the downside of being so empathetic, as I'm sure lots of empaths will tell you that that is the downside. Um, what, was, what was the assumption? You wear your emotions on your sleeve. I've heard that phrase before and I'm not sure I know exactly what it means. I'm guessing it means you're kind of open with how you feel, which is true. I'm very blunt and straightforward and kind of say it how it is. So when I'm happy, you'll be able to tell because I'll be dancing around and singing and laughing and making jokes. And, or if I'm upset or angry, um, I'd rather sort, sort it out and move on um, as part of my self-care, but also my... Uh, as healthy relationships and boundaries as well so I prefer to talk through it and get over it so yeah you're never gonna have to guess where you stand with me basically because I'm pretty just what you see is what you get so I think that's where we're gonna stop I think this video is pretty long already and my battery is flashing so like this video if you liked it subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video all right bye